Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. I'm back from the men's conference. It was a successful conference in Jackson, Mississippi. God blessed in a mighty way, and God bless the wonderful people of Jackson, Mississippi. Thank you for receiving us. We had church down there, and we were able to make a difference in that wonderful city and place, and uh, I praise God for our presiding bishop, allowing me the privilege of working with the men's ministry, and I thank God for my uh, cohort, our co-director, Bishop Michael B. Golden, Jr. We worked together together to produce uh, what I thought was the greatest um, men's conference, Mission to Men, uh, Men Perfecting Men's Conference that we've had in our great church. And to God be the glory for that. And while we were down there doing that, thank God the evangelist missionary Vonetta Wilborn ministered here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, and I know that you were blessed by her. Well, tonight, I'm, I'll be back in the saddle, and I have some things that I want to share with you. I tell you, these are some uh, unusual times in which we live, and I am grateful, my friends. I am so grateful. I am so grateful. Can I say it again? I am so grateful that I'm anchored in Jesus Christ. Jesus is my anchor and he keeps my soul. In him, I'm steadfast while the billows roll. I am secure even when the wind blows because he's my anchor and he keeps my soul and he's your anchor. And there are people who are watching this right now who are anchored in Jesus and we are not swayed by the winds of time and by the assault that are on uh, the foundations of our great nation and this world. The Bible says this in Psalms chapter number 11 and in verse uh, 3 it says if the foundations be destroyed what can the righteous do? The foundations here is a metaphor for our institutions, for our established institutions, our, our civil order, um, our belief in absolute truth, our belief uh, in truth opposed to situational ethics, relativisms, and all these other isms that are uh, appearing in today's world. I was just taken aback when I learned that our uh, current uh, press secretary, um, Corrine Jean Perry, I hope that I said her name right, Corrine Jean Perry, uh, here's what she said. The, uh, speaking of our children, uh, the, the children belong to all of us. White House Press Secretary Corrine Jean Perry has drawn angry reactions for commenting that children, quote, belong to all of us, end of quote, at an award ceremony held by the, and you know I don't call them gay, and lesbian alliance against defamation. While speaking to, of all people, glad, she makes the statement that our children belong to all of us. Jane Perry made the comments during an interview with Jezebel Magazine. Now there's a name for you for a magazine. Jezebel Magazine at the 2023 GLAAD Awards, weeks after President Joe Biden said there is no such thing as someone else's child. And uh, our nation's children are all our children. She's advocating for children to have increased access to sex change operations, procedures which are operations, procedures which are banned or restricted in many countries. The activist organization Catholic Voice accused the Biden administration of working to destroy the role of parents at every turn. These people are coming after the foundations of society. Uh, they are attacking the very notion that a husband and wife 
uh, their children are theirs. That that single mom's child is hers, and they are attacking the uh, that single parent, that single dad. The children is his. They are attacking this so that they can give rights to children. Listen, it's not that they want to take care of children, but they want to give rights to children uh, so that children can make decisions on their uh, on sexual reassignment surgery. Uh, Jane Perry, uh, Mrs. Jane Perry, uh, and, and I want to read something to you from um, the organization called Catholics Vote accused the Biden administration of working to destroy the role of parents at every turn in a comment uh, provided by the Daily Caller, Dr. Stanley Goldfarb, board chairman of the medical group Do No Harm, said that children can't make informed judgments about these sort of treatments. Jan Perry is correct that the state plays an important role regarding children, Dr. Farb Goldfarb said. The role is to protect children from abuse and from their own inability to make good judgments. That is why children cannot drive, cannot smoke, cannot vote. The idea that children can make informed judgments about altering their body and their reproduction productive future suggests that adults, particularly uh, those in healthcare who support so-called gender uh, uh, affirming care are betraying these children. And I agree with Catholic vote 100%. You're talking about a betrayal of children, little kids who are, who can't drive, who can't make informed decisions about other things. Now we're saying that the children belong to us all. So now government is taking the place of mom and dad. Government is taking the place of God. Government is taking your place. And now government knows what's best for your children. This would be laughable if it wasn't that uh, for the fact that these people are serious. They are attacking the very foundations that causes civilization to be uh, possible. We are defunding the police. We are giving special rights and special uh, considerations to criminals. We have, in many cases, done away with a cashless bail, and we are more concerned uh, with the rights of criminals than we are with the rights of victims. We see an assault on society. But the question is, what can the righteous do? Well, the next verse tells us, it says, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord, the Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, look at this, his eyelids try the children of men. What can we do? We can look up. <laughs> we can look to God. We can turn to the God of the Bible. We can make our stand and declare God's truth, knowing, knowing that we have not been abandoned by the God of the Bible, that he has not relinquished his control over society and all of these other things. So my friends, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to continue instant in prayer. I want you to seek the Lord as never before. And whatever you do, speak up for him. Whatever you do, let your voices be heard. Stand for and defend the foundations that have made America what she is today. We need family. We need moms and dads. We need good, healthy communities. We need moral laws in place. We need to uphold the, the values and the virtues of, of biblical Christianity. 
which the righteousness of Christianity has made it possible for society to flourish and for people to live and to enjoy, yes, to be safe and to uh, experience and uh, this great uh, experience of of experiment of America and to uh, take advantage of the American dream. So don't you be fooled by these wicked people who are coming after uh, our uh, foundations. And for my brothers and sisters out there who who look like me as never before, I want to say to you, join the fight in fighting for these time-honored foundations. Let's fight for the role of parents. Do not, do not surrender your authority and your opinion and what you know about raising your children to some school teacher or some school administrator or some political uh, head who is as messed up as they come. Do not allow any politician regardless to uh, your political persuasion and regardless to the party that they represent. Don't let them talk you out of or talk you into accepting the garbage that they are trying to sell you today. Mom and dad, protect your children. Do what you have to to protect your children. And if they're pushing this gender reassignment surgery, if they're pushing uh, the child can get the abortion pill without mom and dad even being made aware of it. If they are, if your child is in a school where the child can go to school and all day long pretend to be a sex that they are not and the teachers not tell you and somehow or another you find out about it, look, you cancel whatever you need to cancel. You downsize. You get a cheaper car. You live in a cheaper home. You get the basic cable. If cable at all, you do what you need to do to get your kid out of that school, put them into a private Christian school where that child will be taught the same values that you teach them at home. See, the school is supposed to, is supposed to reaffirm what is being taught at home. And we send them to school so they can learn how to live in this world, not to be their moral teachers and things like that. People have their parents and their churches for that. So, so much for that. I just want to say to the parents, I did, this is just to call you to pay attention. Pay attention to what's going on. Uh, but just know that God's in charge. So look up. Look up and live. Look up and exhale. Look up and get ready to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> you guessed it. <laughs> Bible study. I'm still excited about Bible study. Oh, and by the way, tonight I'm going to do something a little different. I received a loving letter from uh, one of uh, our many supporters and they asked me if I would clarify and it has to do with some statements that we've made concerning suicide and uh, I am going to take the time uh, at the beginning of the message the Lord willing to uh, to answer uh, the concerns of this very fine uh, man of God who has, who has written us uh, a very fine letter. This is no enemy of the faith. This is no one who is trying to undercut uh, 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 the word of God. As a matter of fact, it comes from someone who loves God's truth the way that we do. And I look forward to answering um, uh, his question and to clarifying uh, whatever we need to clarify with regards to this issue, we see it more and more in society. It's growing and God speaks to it. Now I'm going to speak to it again tonight. God bless you. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.